I remember thinking to myself, I'm not good enough to be here. I'm not good enough to be backstage with these people. What? You're a pharmacist from Jersey. You know, what are you doing here? You know, <laughs> and I had that moment the whole time thinking to myself, oh my goodness, they're going to see. They're going to see that I don't, that I don't have what it takes. They're going to see that I don't, th that this is a mistake. Hello, Jocelyn. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing fabulous today. It's good to see you. Good to be here. I'm so excited. So am I. I'm so excited to have you on the Break Time with Patty show. Dear friend, Jocelyn and I had just, just had the pleasure to meet in the Bahamas this past August 2023. <laughs> so very quickly before we jump right in, who is Jocelyn B. Tyson? She is the 2023 world champion of public speaking. <laughs> More to come on that in a few minutes. However, her talents extend way beyond public speaking. With a doctorate in pharmacy earned in 2006 from Rutgers University, Justin's academic background is as impressive as a professional achievement. On her spare time, she enjoys spending time with her family and friends and participating in various athletic activities and serving the community as well. You can read more about Justin's Toastmaster journey in the Philadelphia Inquirer. All right, I've talked it up. <laughs> Let's get started. Can you please tell us a little bit about Jocelyn as a young girl and a teenager? What was it like to be in her shoes and her sneakers? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Patty. At a very young age, my parents signed myself and my brother up for music lessons. And I remember packing us all up, going out to, and it was in Settlement Musical in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we would go almost every weekend to have music lessons. And there's violin, piano, goodness, I think we did singing with the choir that was up there as well. And just having those moments where you're learning about how music is done and what, how to, how to read music and interpret and hear different things. So it was a, it was a definitely a learning experience at a very early age. And I think that's when you start to learn how to present. I remember my first recital and I had my violin and I was getting ready to go out there. And I found out that my instructor was not present. And I remember thinking, oh no, <laughs> I'm not going out there. If he's not here, I'm not going out there. And I remember having a tantrum and I didn't have to go. And I was like, oh my goodness. But I realized that that's not, that's not what you do. You don't practice and have these moments to have your recital and then back out. So you start to learn how to handle those butterflies. And I remember having to do that pretty early but I enjoyed music and you enjoyed that expression and how to present and you you take the time to have discipline and that continued on into a teenager when I went into high school. I started playing the saxophone. So I got involved in the marching band and actually I became drum major. <laughs> so I, I was drum major for the marching band. I did the jazz band. I was a band geek. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a moment for you to have interactions with other people, also a moment for you to express yourself. And especially when it comes down to a solo, I don't think there's any more nerves that I think I had that <laughs> than when it's time to do a solo. And I think you're probably at your most vulnerable, right? So you're expressing mm -hmm. everything and you're just giving all this and you're hoping that they like it. Mm -hmm. And I remember that's, that's, that's how it is it, to handle those butterflies, handle those nerves, and then be expressive. So I, I had that moment early in music. And I do attribute that to how I was able to now pull that into public speaking yes. at this point. So, yeah. Definitely. It's fascinating. <laughs> it, it's actually nerve wracking. But did, don't you find that sometimes it kept coming? Now we have tools because we, we are Toastmasters members, but there are tools to deal with those nerves. But it always gets to us. I don't know if you find there's always this kind of little, I don't know if uh, you want to put on the imposter syndrome, but it's like, oh, I can't do it. I'm not good enough. You know, always, always, always those butterflies. And I think they never, they never leave. At least they haven't left me. So maybe some of these people that are higher levels and been doing this for years, they're very more comfortable. And, but 
to me, those butterflies are always sitting there. Like you're about to go out here. You're about to do this. So, And, and I was told by very, um, well, very eloquent speakers that if you don't have those butterflies, if you don't have those nerves is because you don't care about your message. So oh, as long as you care, they're always going to be there. That's what I was told anyhow. Ooh. Yes. So you see, you're right out there. You care about your message, Jocelyn. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so at that point, then, what was the turning point that made you decide to go visit a public speaking club the first time then? I would say I have been in pharmacy for quite some time, and I have the ability to communicate well with people one-on-one, -on -one, but to project and to give a speech in front of people, I don't often have those opportunities. I do get the chance to speak with some of the community outreach, but you're still looking at an audience that's probably about 25, 30 mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And also it's, it's, it's different. It's not, I'm doing educational, but it, it, to me, it wasn't so much as a projecting and motivating. And I wanted to also see about changing my job. And as and in this case, I was in a compounding pharmacy. And so for me, it was a moment to say, okay, well, where do I want to be? What new job do I want to do? What area of pharmacy maybe I want to go into? And I wasn't exactly sure, but one thing I did, I was like, I know I would want to work on public speaking. And I, and I take the term of you, you dress for the job that you want, not the job that you have. Mm. And I think that also goes for, right, preparing for that job that you want and preparing for that position that you want to be at. What are some of the skills that you need to develop? What are some of the trainings or certifications do you wanna do? Maybe you're not qualified for it yet, but you will. And if you start somewhere, then that's where you're, you'll get there eventually. Mm -hmm. So I saw public speaking as something I wanna do. I want to be able to be in front of people, project, be poised, flow, and feel confident about that. So I saw, to, and that's to Toastmasters. I remember visiting other clubs, trying to find that right fit. And I started with my club, which is Voorhees Toastmasters Club in New Jersey. And I was, this was it. This was the perfect place. And it was actually in 2020, I went to my very first meeting with them. And then boom, like the pandemic happened. So I hadn't a chance to join. I hadn't a chance to speak. I just was floating around to different clubs. And I realized this was the one I wanted to go to. And once they started doing virtuals and I, I joined in. So that was September, 2021 that I finally was able to lock in and start on my path. Ooh, amen to that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Cause some people, they join one club and then they don't like it. And they say, oh, Toastmasters is not for me. It's about uh, finding the, the right club. That's a good fit for you. So I went to visit a few of them. I really liked mine, but I kept shopping around and I said, no, 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 this is it. You know, you just know when you know, right? Yes, you know when you know. And I think you're right. Shopping around, it's okay. You're not thinking any, I don't, at least personally, I wouldn't feel bad. If, now that I know how it works, I would feel okay if someone came in and just said, I just want to see, I just want to kind of visit, see the vibe, see the people and see if you connect. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's perfectly fine. Find that right fit because there's plenty of clubs out there. You can find the one mm -hmm. that's great for you. Yes, yes. <laughs> and there's one thing with joining a club, because not everybody who's a, a Toastmasters member wants to compete. But what made you decide to start competing then? It was, I have to admit, it was more so my my club members. And that was the number one. I think it was them just telling me, you're good. You, you gave a couple speeches and they're like, this one was good. This is a contest speech. That's a contest speech, Jocelyn. You should do that one. And you're thinking to yourself, no way. Uh-uh, no, mm -mm, not good enough. You're, like I said, there's that inner critic that tells you you're not, slow down. <laughs> you guys love me and we're all family here. And yeah, 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 you're biased. <laughs> but it was, I went during my path, it was presentation mastery and it was a networking assignment that you had to do. And it required you to go to an event where you can network. At the time, it was perfectly timed out that I had the district conference to go to. I show up at the district conference. I'm trying to get everything for the assignment. And what should I see? But the contest, they were doing the virtual contest that was showing all that for those that had qualified for that. So the contestants were up. I think, I don't know, maybe it was maybe 13, 14. I can't remember the exact number. But one thing I liked was in our program book, they had a, an evaluation form. 
and you had like checkoffs that you could put for the contestant speech. So you got to sit down and listen to each speech, check off for the vocal variety, check off for originality, little things like that. So you can kind of go along with each person's speech. And I remember looking and going, this is, this is neat. Okay, let me see. And so you're looking at them, spe the speaking and you're, and you're cutting along and you're like, okay, okay. Yeah, that was good. Mm, that one wasn't as, mm, I see what, and so you're able to kind of, now you're, now it's a game because now I want to see if my list lines up with the judges list and let's see who makes it at that time to see who moves on so I remember at the end I don't know if I can and of course I, I can't remember how close I was I wish I could find that booklet now because I think that's when it inspired me to go I would love to be up here with mine and have my speech brought up for the the group and hear what people have for their feedback because I took it serious because that was also part of the assignment that I had to go and speak to people and and talk to them so I would go up to the people that I thought were like they had some really phenomenal speeches and this is what I and I gave that feedback back and I think that's the part I like about Toastmasters is some of those evaluations the constructive the really things that you can pull and and work and develop from and that's the difference you're not just speaking you're learning how to develop and build and that's what I wanted to give those contestants. So for me, I was looking around trying to find their, your speech was great. Let me tell you. And I would give, I challenge you to try this. I, I think you did great on that. And it was really good. So I felt like a thing was like, I want that. I want someone to come back and give me feedback on my speech. So that was the number two. Then I, I said, let's do it. Let's sign up for this contest. Wow. Mm, I'm so grateful that you did <laughs> because uh, yes, we're going to get to your messages soon, but they needed to be heard by the world. So very, very happy about that. Uh, can you tell us about the few months and weeks leading up to the Bahamas championship? Because then, okay, I don't want to skip this because you're talking about how now you competed to go to the district, uh, I guess the next year. Well, you, you made it to the district. So can you tell us a bit about the moment that you found out, oh my God, I became the district champion and then all the way leading up to the Bahamas. Like, how did you get prepared? Who helped you with your speeches? Like, yeah, share the love. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. At district is when, before they even announced the winner, district, they said, they started telling us about how if the winner has to go to, of course, the semifinals, and then, well, and then it was going to be judged based on your video. And if you won, how that was going to, the process was going to go. And that's when I found out that May, that if you won, you need a new speech. And I remember thinking, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I need a new speech? I, I What? And I remember thinking to myself, what am I going to talk about? What What do I have to say? And I started starting to have that feeling of, oh, don't, I don't know if I have, I can do this. I don't know. But I remember thinking, I have a speech, you have a story, you have the triathlon. I, I did that that summer of 2021, and you you always wanted to talk about it. Let's talk about it. So I started trying to figure out how to craft this speech. I reached out to my mentor, Rhonda Young, and our, who's our District 38 director, and and I remember reaching out to my club. I remember writing everything out, bringing it to her, bringing it to the club and still tweaking on it. It wasn't right. It wasn't this, it wasn't that. So having to still working, it was a working process and just getting ready for that. But at the same time, I was also applying for a new job. You know, I'm talking about this job that I want and I'm reaching for that and I got one. And so now I get this new job and I'm excited. The job says, Will you be willing to move? I'm like, well, yeah, sure. Why not? These are new opportunities. I'm taking it. But now I have this contest to get ready for it. Oh, and I have to move. And oh, I have a new job. And so there was a lot of back and forth that I had to do where now I have to travel. And the I was moving to Maryland from Jersey and it's about two hours, two hours. But it was still a lot of back and forth, finding a place, coming back home. It was so many things. And then with the onboarding process, it was a whirlwind to say the least. But I squeezed in some time to take on and do Zoom calls wherever I could with some of the other clubs that I had in, in of course, in the area or in those that were not just nearby, but people that I had working relationships with. So I reached out and still projected and still did my speech and tweaked it all along. Seems like all the way up until I felt like I got ready to go to the Bahamas. And then it was like, that's it. That is it. This is what we're going to do. Let's go and stop fiddling with it. It, it is what it is. Let's go. 
So, yeah. Ooh, that sounds so stressful. <laughs> yeah, because uh, at times it, when life gets very intense, it's like it's not, there's no time to compete because it's very, people don't realize it, but you have to make a lot of different iterations of your speech. Some of them hundreds of times you have to repeat. So it, that you manage to do all of that with the move and a new job is like, woo. <laughs> My goodness. Yes. Yes. Patty, sleepless nights, sleepless <laughs> nights where you're tossing and turning whether or not, where do I need to change this and add that? Yes. Sure. <laughs> solid, solid, solid. Anyway, more on that uh, very soon, but uh, let's talk about your semifinal speech for a moment. Do you want to play again? <laughs> I loved it. I was laughing and not just me that the crowd was going nuts. Uh, because I was uh, I was raised by a father who loved to play cards, Chinese checkers, chess, you name it. Okay, and there was no such thing as letting us kids win ever. <laughs> and um, so I felt like you were talking about my dad. Your message was extremely relatable and impactful. Please, dear friend, go watch it right here is the link. And uh, it's funny, I actually raised my daughter the same way too. Like I was playing cards with her. She was three years old and I never let her win. And people would tell me, let the child win. I said, no, how is she going to become good if I let her win? So she's like, she beats me now. Um, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> but at least I know that she's, uh, it's because uh, we have, have the same values as your father. So can you share with us how you find your stories and what motivates you to share these inspiring messages with your audiences, please? Absolutely. You find your stories in your everyday in your life and what things that you're learning from. Mm -hmm. I remember, yes. And do you want to play again? I was actually out with my dad doing daddy daughter day that we would kind of do. And we go to the pool hall and I, I tell the story all the time because it's, it's truly how it came up. And we're at the pool hall and I'm telling him, dad, there's a contest coming up. I decided I'm going to do this contest for Toastmasters. He's like, okay. And I'm like, I need it. I need, I need a good what am I going to talk about? I need something good that I can talk about. I need something that can motivate. I need something that can inspire people. And so he starts giving me ideas. And now we're playing as 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 we're talking. And at some point he's he's going and he's throwing out ideas and he sinks a ball and he goes and then goes on another one. I was like, no, not that one. He sinks another ball and he gives me another one. I'm like, no, not that one. And all of a sudden it dawns on me. This man is beating me. What is going on? And he's like, he's going, I'm, I'm, I'm still just, just like, no, not that one, dad, not that one. And then all we both realize he almost is about to win. And he turns to me and he looks over and says, too bad. You can't talk to them about how I'm whooping that butt in the pool. And I said, oh, hmm, hmm, is there a story there? <laughs> and all I can think is, of course, I lose. I don't know, it's okay. And so now you're carrying the billiards up to the register because the loser has to pay. And of course, my dad is boasting across the, you know, <laughs> guess who's guess who's got to pay today? And so you're like, these people don't even know you, dad. Why are you telling these people this story? <laughs> so I get to the register and the guy's ringing us up and he's like, oh, okay, uh, so how'd it go? And he's like, ask her, she's paying. And I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. And he says, <laughs> we're going for ice cream later. And the guy looks at my dad going, ice cream, uh -oh, okay. And my dad says, but no sprinkles. Sprinkles are for winners. And of <laughs> course, I'm like, oh. And the guy was like, oh, that's cold, man. That's horrible. I can't, oh. And I said, that's okay, sir. He's been doing this my whole life. And at that point, there was my story because he has been doing this my whole life. And I've been learning my whole life from somebody that is inspiring. And that, that those stories are, are funny. So like, that's why I said, you find them in sometimes the little things. Mm -hmm. And even if you can't, cause I trust me, I've been in those things where you're like, what am I gonna talk about? Ask the people around you. Mm -hmm. See if what something they remembered about a story that you did or something you said, or see if something can spark a memory. So talk to people, look around, find out and just tell them sometimes be open. I'm trying to figure out, I have to talk about X. Do you remember anything that I might've done? Or do you remember something? And it helps to spark. Oh yeah, I remember. So you'll be surprised where these stories may come from. Talk about it, find it. And it doesn't have to be anything big. It can be just something simple as playing a game. I'm a hungry, hungry hippo. <laughs> <laughs> when you get your story. I love it. It's so true. Anything. Because that's people are always trying to find the outstanding events or falling in the Himalayas and having to crawl back to civilization. Like it doesn't have to be something crazy that you invent. It's literally every day. Yeah. Building an egg. <laughs> I've even uh 
Yes. Somebody, yeah, anything. How many people do they open their pantry and find out what they want to do as they talk about this or what's going on with a broken dish, you know, washer or what's going on with so many things that like your life, they're all around you. Our stories are there. Yes. Yes. Mm, I love it. Thank you for sharing those tips. <laughs> so, um, okay. So as you know, I've interviewed um, dozens of world champion speakers and most of them had to try again and again and again for years before making it to the world stage and winning. So I need to hear, can you tell us, or we need to hear, can you please tell us what was your first reaction when you found out that you made it to the final round after beating 30,000 contestants on your first try? <laughs> I know. All I could think was, no way. I'm still winning. Okay. It was just like, oh, I, okay. Wow. I remember thinking, no way, me. I, I was surprised I even made it to the Bahamas. I mean, don't get me wrong. You, you, you know, you know, when you're like, this is a good speech. It resonates to a lot of people. When I gave it for, to prepare, people recognize and, and related with it, but you're still thinking, but there's so many other people out there and there's so many people that are better. I thought, and you're just thinking to yourself like, no way, not, not me, but then yeah, maybe me, maybe just maybe me. And so, yeah, all these things were coming highs, lows, everything was going on when they announced that I was going to now be out there on the world stage. I think I started getting, it was like, wow, this is really happening. This actually happening. So it's, it was still, I, I joke about it, but it's so surreal. It was, wow. <laughs> Yes, I can totally, I can only imagine uh, what, what it must be. And again, always feeling, it's funny. I, I would tell that to, to friends, like people would say, yeah, but they're better than me at the district. Oh, I'm never going to, they always win every year. I said, it doesn't <laughs> matter. That, that's not that. There's so many variable that it's only for me, it's God decides who's going to win. You understand? It's not just uh, how well you prepare, like anything could happen. And it's all about how you move people and so many different variables. So yes, you were meant to make it there. <laughs> Thank you. I do. I, I recognize sometimes I had, to, I had to tell myself that it's not about your past. It's not about all the things that you might have, the accolades that you've achieved. It's about your story. Mm -hmm. You get to stand on equal footing. Your story stands right there next to somebody else who might have been here before semifinals, the 12th year, 10th year. You have a story just as equally to share as someone else. Your story is no worse. It is still your story and you seem to share it. So, And you're the best person to share your own story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So let's go to your final speech. Have you been there? Mm -hmm. Dear friend, <laughs> if you have not watched it yet, even if you watched it, watch it again. Okay. Uh, it's a seven minute winning speech. Uh, please go watch it now. You can interrupt this. Go watch it and come back <laughs> to hear whatever she has to say. Um, so that's when you left the stage after delivering your speech, what went through your mind? Cause now you're done. You've been through all this stress, all those months, you said it, there's no, nothing else for you to do. So did you think you might have a chance to earn the title at that point? No, <laughs> no, I actually, uh, I did not. I, and, and that's the inner critic, right? That's that person inside you that tells you all I could think was how I messed up because I had this flawless idea of how it was going to be. And it was going to be this. And you, I, it was going to be boom, boom, boom. All my points were going to hit. I was going to do it just flawlessly. But all I could think was, oh, you missed that. Oh, you missed that one. Oh, you, you, you stuttered there. They're going to see that you stuttered. Yeah, that's it. Nope. Mm -hmm. And I came down and sat down. And one of the contestants, she said, you did really great. And I remember thinking, no, I messed up like four times. And, and that's all I could think was too busy, not even just like, ah, all I could think was it wasn't perfect. But then I started thinking, could could a non-perfect speech still be good enough? I see the flaws, but there is still enough good in almost everyone's speech. And maybe mine was going to, to still have that. Maybe the message still was going to resonate. And maybe that's what people needed to see that a perfectly imperfect speech can still win you world. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> that hit me deeply. <laughs> yes. For all the perfectionists, you know how I many people are held back from reaching their destiny because they're afraid of not being perfect, you know? So you yeah. don't have to be perfect. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. But hard work. You did. There was a lot of hard work into this message. 
And I did not notice that you see, you tell me you messed up four times. I did not see a single flaw for me. It was when you were delivering it, it was, whoa, <laughs> there's nothing. Uh, so exactly, we don't see, you know, your message, I was supposed to go left or right or whatever, but we don't see those things because we don't know. Right. And yeah. we know that even when I know in music, you sometimes don't even realize when you're singing, you're, you were supposed to go into verse two, but you, you skipped over and repeated verse one and no one knew that that's what, not what you wanted. And because as long as you allow yourself to relax and to flow and feel comfortable, people don't realize what it should have been. They get a chance to see what it is. So let us not worry about that. Perfection is just, it's, it's a, that's an illusion. Mm -hmm. Just relax. Yes. That's what I would, that's what my advice I would tell myself is just relax. Yeah. <laughs> we don't always listen to our own advice, but yes, we do, we do tell each other <laughs> ourselves that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> when you won first place, it was the second time in history that there was an all-female podium of the World Championship of Public Speaking. <laughs> Can you describe what it felt like to be on that podium alongside the other two extraordinary ladies, Nisha Shivram and Mariam Ghani, please? It was wonderful. It felt good. It felt girl power. It was like, girl strong. Yes, ladies, <laughs> let's do it. And I thought it was such a creative, such a picture, right? The colors were great. They had the blue, the red, the white. Miriam looked so elegant in her white. And Anisha, she looked so strong and powerful. And, and she projected that way. I think that it was, it felt good. And I was like, we, ladies, we're doing it. We're doing it here. We deserve a spot. Since 2018, I know Ramona, when she was one and to now here and the fact is like women weren't allowed in Toastmasters and it wasn't too long ago like 1970 was the first woman that was allowed and then the first woman who won was like by 1977 we deserve a spot here we're here and I think that that was really great and I hope it was inspiring to young ladies that are out there thinking about whether or not should they become, you know, in part of an organization to to push yourself to to excel and publicly speak? Yes, yes. Young ladies deserve a spot up here too, and and this is the platform to do it. And Toastmasters is welcoming to people of different ethnicities, genders, race. It, it, it's all out there, and this is this is where it happens because this is what our world is ready to see. So it felt great. It yes. Felt it looked great to witness it uh, from the audience. I was just so excited. I was so, so excited. Um, well, that well, not only my friend made it because I was there also to encourage Mariam Gani, but that Nisha Shivam, I've been cheering for her for years because mm -hmm. I've been watching her uh, in the last few years. And then you were like, yes, I, I knew you were going to make it up there. We don't never know, right? Because sometimes it's a few points off. So you never know who's going to really be first. But I knew you were going to be up there and I was right. <laughs> so, so exciting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So... What advice can you share with Toastmasters contestants to help them on their journey to become world champion of public speaking? Like something you wish someone would have told you when you first decided to start competing not too long ago. Not too, I would say definitely get out there, try it. Just don't, don't worry about it. Don't wait on it. You're never going to have this perfect speech because that's, again, an illusion. So just start out there and start giving something to the world and you'll be surprised how it'll help to form you. Because I think contests are a little bit different than your normal speeches in terms of your club. It puts the pressure on just a little bit and you get to see some really phenomenal speakers. You get to hear some really great speeches that you don't typically see. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure people have some advanced clubs. I wasn't a part of that, but I got a chance to see different, different things in higher levels and just having it resonate sometimes more because that message is now a bigger message. It's not part of just an assignment on your path that you're, you're stumbling across or someone trying to practice for something. You're having people that are now trying to motivate the world in that they're, they're, in their message. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's the fun part of it all, that that's where you get to learn and hear people's stories. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, absolutely, get out there, get out there. Mm, yes, it starts with that. Yeah. Thinking that we might be good enough to get out there. So mm -hmm. to start, start the process. <laughs> yes. Okay. So after the roller coaster ride, and that's what I call it, <laughs> um, <laughs> and all the blessings that came along the way and the trials and tribulations <laughs> you went through during the international contest, can you share with us your three best um, lessons learned about the process or about yourself? 
what I learned in this process, definitely one is just be like a sponge, take in as much as you can. And, you know, if anything, jot some things down because you're going to get advice and hear things from so many people and you're going to wish you remember that. So almost like keep a little a log, if you will, while you're out and about and bumping into people with Toastmasters, even when you go to take your speech to other clubs, if you're going to do that, jot some things down. You don't have to remember it all, but that way you can start to fiddle with it and really take and interpret that. Cause sometimes you're like, someone said this and someone said that, and, oh, I wish I remember what he said. And, oh, I wish I remember what they said. And I wish I got that person's info. So sometimes even if it's on a notepad on your phone or something that you can do, some people are old school when they write it down, just try to take in as much so that way you can filter it in and put a, put it in a place somewhere. Number two, oh my goodness, I would say is sleep. <laughs> rest well, try to sleep, try to have something where it can help you to, to just relax. Because a lot of times you get so caught up in all that that's going on, that you get so busy that you set, sometimes you, you set yourself to the side, but you really still need to make self-care very, very much important. Very, very much important. So I would say definitely have some self-care involved in that. And then lastly, have fun with it. Have fun. I know for me, I, I know that some people have different outlooks on what they see for the contest and why they do it, but I wanted to have fun. Toastmasters is something I enjoyed. This is something I, you know, look, we're volunteering for and you want to grow with this. And so you want to remember what you did it for, what you started for. And if that's something important to you, then, then keep that keep that as the primary subject because a lot of things get lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. I remember when it was time for me to get ready to go, I was stressing so much that I said, I started writing down on pieces of paper and putting it around the house because mind you, the house is almost empty because I'm packing. But I wrote Toastmasters is supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. See it again. Toastmasters is supposed to be fun. Toastmasters is supposed to be fun. Everywhere I went, Toastmasters is supposed to be fun. Relax. Don't let this stress you. Mm -hmm. enjoy be in the moment and just just be let some of that go and enjoy this mm -hmm. you're learning you volunteered for this <laughs> you're, you're not getting paid you're enjoying this so relax and, and let it be fun for you so, mm. yeah. yes thank you I'm telling you, I'm, we're getting all the the wisdom from you because you know you learned so much so it's 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 huge value what you're you're sharing with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And okay, I'm going to try to get three. I don't know if you're able to share three best tips on how to be a memorable speaker. Lots of threes going on here. I see. I would say your audience. Understand who you're speaking to. Are you speaking to the world? Are you speaking to who is your audience? And knowing what their needs are, I think is paramount. You know, you have to start there. Who, what is, who is trying to get this message and who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. And I think that's truly, that, that really needs to resonate. Number two, of course, is your, is your content and what is your story and what are we saying? Have you addressed the what, where, when, who, why, and making sure that that why again comes right back to that audience and why do they want, why do they want to listen? What's in it for me? You know, and that's the culture that we're in is people want to know what's in it for them. And so you want to make sure you're making that very, very clear. And I think the last one for me, I know was the delivery what am I doing that's drawing you in? How am I captivating your attention? How am I keeping you there? We're in such a squirrel, scrolling, what's here, what's that, what's next? Mm -hmm. To think that you're going to be able to stand still and project is no longer the thing anymore. I mean, some, some may think that's the case, and I understand, but what will captivate your audience? What is going to cause somebody not to pull their phone out on you and then and, and stop listening? You want to make sure that you can be dynamic in that delivery. And I think that was helpful for me. And I think that that made, I, I believe that made a little bit of a difference. Some would say humor, some would say, but I, I do believe that it, you, as long as you're resonating to the audience, you're captivating them, however it may, may be, then to me, I think that's that makes the difference. That sets you just a little bit, just a little bit up, making you know, making their audience lock in. 
That is huge what you just mentioned. Absolutely. Yes. How do you get them to not pull out their phone? I love that <laughs> because there's just a lot of action going on on phone. So yes, no, there was nobody looking at their phone while you were speaking. I can guarantee <laughs> you that <laughs> I was, I was laughing. I was rolling on the floor laughing. It was particularly funny. You got a lot, a lot of laughs. So, <laughs> but not trying, you're not trying to be funny. You were just naturally, the story as, as it, it unfolded was just hilarious. So <laughs> And uh, I'm sure they'll all agree when they watch the video. <laughs> yeah, I laughed at myself. And I think that was made it a good story because I was just laughing at myself and throughout the whole process because it was it, it was comically tragic. <laughs> it was just tragic. And it was just the part I knew. And after that race, I had known this is a speech. I don't know how I'm going to do it, when I'm going to do it, but somebody's got to hear it. Because I came home and I remember talking to my mom about the whole race. And I mean, I, because I didn't even get into the part how I fell off the bike. It was just a lot. <laughs> so, but I remember she was cracking up and she's listening to the story. She's laughing and I'm telling her all about it. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to give that story to the world and see if you guys would would relate. If you would, you would, you would, it would hold your attention just like it did hers. And yes, it did. It did work. <laughs> it did resonate. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'd like to address something that a lot of people are dealing with. Uh, we quickly talked about it, but when I started my speaking journey not so long ago, um, after decades of being silent, uh, I often struggle with feelings of inadequacy and imposter syndrome. Up, even up to today, to be honest, it still uh, comes at me and I, I have to like get myself back together. No, Patricia, you're good enough. <laughs> But um, have you faced similar difficulties in your journey? And if so, can you share one story or experience where you faced, you know, and overcame imposter syndrome? Absolutely. I think even in this journey, especially this journey for me, because you're looking at someone that tried the contest for the first time. I'm only two years into my Toastmasters journey. And here I am on stage with people who I have been watching. Like I've seen some of these people and they're in in their in their in their, in their journey. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm not good enough to be here. I'm not good enough to be backstage with these people. I was watching when you put in for so it's anybody that's putting in Toastmasters and they put in Google just to say, what is it about? The world champion videos pop up. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the Aaron Beverly's, you're looking at the Ramona's and you're looking at them stand in front of these, the stage and they're poised and giving all these amazing and phenomenal stories. And you're thinking one day I just might be good enough to be up there. Never did I think that it was going to happen within that, that time frame. I just didn't think that. And so that imposter that says, you don't deserve to be back here. Like, how are you here? Especially backstage. I was backstage having a full moment of just, it was, I don't want to, almost like a panic attack. It was very much so, like close to it because all I could think, it was all coming down on me right then and there that you're back here with really good people. Like these people are great. You're, they're they're teaching public speaking. They're they're out here doing podcasts and 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 TED talks. You need to be here with people doing TED talks. What you're a pharmacist from Jersey? You know what are you doing here? You know and and, and I'm I, and I had that moment. I had it right there on that stage the whole time, thinking to myself, Oh my goodness, they're gonna see. They're gonna see that I don't that I don't have what it takes. They're going to see that I don't, that, that this is a mistake. And then we will stand when I won and having to stand on the stage now and having to talk to my Brown and I'm sitting here like, oh my goodness, how did I get here? They're going to see that you're not good enough. And I was, that's the part that I know I struggled with. And I still do when it comes down to sometimes all the, the things that are coming with this. But I keep trying to remind myself, you worked hard. Cyril, who one of the 2022, uh, no, 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 excuse me, 20, yeah, yeah, 2022, yeah, 2022, I was like, what year is it, 2022 winner, he said something to me, he said, you, and I think he said, he said, the judges, there were more than 16, or I think it's like 16 judges that are out there in that audience, and I, and I had to get that number to be exact, but I think it was like, he said, you deserved that win, don't let anyone tell that from you, but you deserved that win, and I almost wanted to break down and cry, because I, I, I felt like I didn't. And I wanted to say, thank you so much for giving me that because I don't 
it took a lot to feel like I, I I did have a good story and I did deserve to be up there. And I and it wasn't just one guy there, a woman that was judging me. It was enough of a panel of judges that deemed me the champion. I had a spot and I have a right to be here. And it and it, it it took a little bit, but that was that was impactful for me. Mm. Yes, that's beautiful. <laughs> it, it's so it's so good that uh, you got to speak to all those because uh, they were all there there were so many of them that w- made the trip to be there uh, yeah. there like Juan, Mark Brown it was so nice to see them all because yeah. I've interviewed them all actually so it was so so cool to, to see them all and they're the best people who can counsel you because they've been there right right <laughs> they've been right. there but they have come they come with so much so much background, so much history. And that's the part where I guess that's the imposter comes in there. And I didn't have that. I didn't have the coaching. I didn't have these phenomenal world championship people that were helping me guide through. I, I don't get me wrong. My mentor, she's great, but she even allowed me to basically write my own speech. And I will come back and she'd say, I like what you did there, but maybe you want to start off a little bit stronger. And so she allowed for me to craft my speech, mm-hmm. but there, all I could think was, is it good enough? And so I, I recognize that space and had that feeling. Um, but I would not encourage anyone that's going through that mm-hmm. is, is, is dig deep. You deserve, don't let that imposter syndrome stop you. Mm-hmm. It will feel that way, but keep going. Mm-hmm. Just keep going. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Jocelyn. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. I'm going to keep going, Jocelyn. If you say yeah. so. <laughs> Keep going, girl. <laughs> yes. Um, as you know, we are living in very challenging times with wars breaking out all over, all over the place. And at times, it uh, may seem like there's no hope for humankind. <laughs> if we look at uh, just the news, just it's very discouraging. So, if someone who's watching us right now and feels discouraged with the world and doesn't see any light in sight, what would you like to tell them, please? And it is difficult. And you are correct, but there is hope. There is light. There is, it is still there. I know some people may not be strong in their faith, but there, as a woman who is, Mm -hmm. I truly believe that there's a purpose, there's a plan, and you may not always know what that is, but rest and believe that it will, it will get better. You know, it it will turn itself around and that even in these dark moments, it will shine even brighter when the light does come. Mm -hmm. So just hold on one more day, one more step. And then there are groups and there's organizations and there's people out there that can you can reach out to and talk about that and don't have to suffer in silence. Have those conversations with people and and get motivation from some things or other people. I know for me, as mentioned, it's my faith and how I navigate that space is very important for me because there are some dark times and there are things that we don't understand and people are stressed nowadays. I just had an incident that happened in my building this morning. And it, a, a man came in and he was, it just got, it escalated. He was angry about one thing and it escalated and someone asked him, could you calm down? And he just blew up. It was just so sad and scary. But that's the thing is that people are sometimes, they're upset about other things and other things going on, but no, don't let something negative stop you. There's still light. Talk it through. You got this. There's something there. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> As long as, uh, yes, there, there is light. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is that they're looking forward to. Me too, I'm a woman, uh, I'm a woman of faith as well. So I, I can always fall back on that when nothing else makes sense. <laughs> I know God is going to make, make sense of it for me. Yes. But yes, um, whatever it is that does it for people, sometimes just going, doing inner work, whatever it is, just holding on to that light. So I love what you said, that it's not what it seems to be. There's, there's more. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes, I love this. Thank you. And uh, finally, you're a very busy lady, um, very, very busy lady. <laughs> so how do you reconcile being a full-time employee in a very demanding job, adapting to a new state and being a highly solicited world champion while maintaining your mental sanity? How do you manage to stay grounded and balanced in all of that? Again, it brings down to your faith. Okay. You're taking the time for self. 
I think there's a lot of self-care that does need to happen. You need to make you a priority. And I will make anyone understand that. I know that life will get crazy, but even if it's 10 minutes, even if it's that quiet hour, first thing you get up, give yourself a moment just to, to take it all in and do a little self-care. Um, so that's really big for me. I take a walk now that I'm, you know, in my new space in my in new area. It's a beautiful landscape. It's a beautiful harbor that's out there. And I'm just walking the area and just enjoying the air and then you know, get back. So you're taking almost like for me, I take a full hour, of no phones, just get out there and just center myself in nature and then get back to the groove of what I have to go and the next thing after that. And also too, finding support groups, friends, reaching out to people, having a scheduling time with people because I'm wearing such a hustle bustle, but send out a text message. Let's have a chat, make it next week, Tuesday, lock it in and start checking in on people and part of your self-care, expand the self-care. Mm. That's what I would say. That's awesome. What I would say. And that's how you stay sane. Mm -hmm. Very good. Absolutely. <laughs> so what's the next step for Justin B. Tyson, please? Uh. <laughs> grow. I am going to work on this. I am going to still cultivate and work on my speaking opportunities. I want to, because I have a few keynotes that are coming up. I want to get sure that I'm prepared and doing those well. I want to be an advocate for Toastmasters and how this space is now changing and making people aware of the opportunities that come with this, the leadership opportunities, the networking that comes with it, so much that I truly comes with it, even getting a chance to talk to you. So I want to make sure that that's something I, I can speak about as well as just growing in the space. I remember on the panel and they said, what was your one word? And mine was grow. I want to get my DTM. You know, I want, <laughs> I want to have those moments where I can still start to perfect. So we'll see. I, I'm looking forward to the next, the next steps that I'm, this is, this has allowed me. I'm truly grateful for the space and I want to make sure that I don't waste this opportunity. Mm. Yes, that's beautiful. And it, and it is a wonderful organization, Toastmasters. Whoever does not know what a DTM is, it stands for Distinguished Toastmaster, which is a very huge accomplishment uh, when somebody gets that title. Yes. And uh, finally, if someone in the audience would like to know more about you or would like to book you to inspire you, motivate their audience for a keynote, how uh, can they reach you? Yes. So right now I am blessed to have my District 38 Public Relations. Uh, she is helping me work this whole space out. And so when it comes down to seeing how someone can get in contact with me, if they want me to speak or any of those opportunities, I would say reaching out to her and that would be at ER at at the TM district 38.org. And I'm sure we'll have it there for someone else that wants to look into it. And also too, if on LinkedIn at Jocelyn B. Tyson Farm D. And I'm accessible and willing to, to listen in and to help however I can in this space. Wonderful. Yes, LinkedIn is how I actually uh, got a hold of you afterwards because I want to let things settle down after the Bahamas. I don't think mm -hmm. it's the time to speak about that. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, dear friends. Let me share my main takeaways. There's so many of them. <clears throat> I'll try to not make it half an hour. <laughs> so number one, dress for the job you want. Prepare for the job also that you want. Okay, so find out the skills. Find out what you need to do. Uh, also, you are good enough. Okay, speak. <laughs> Get your new speech going as soon as you make it to the district. Don't wait. <laughs> okay. Get help from people around you. Okay, whether it's a mentor, a coach, or in her case, it was district director. Find your stories in your everyday. Okay, ask people what you've done, what you may have done, or talk to them, look around. And bring down the volume on your inner critic. Mm. <laughs> your message doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, the message can still resonate even if you made a little mistake. Okay, get out there, uh, try it, give something to the world, give back. Be a sponge, keep a log, take notes, rest well, sleep, just relax, put a lot of emphasis on self-care, have fun with it. And those best three tips on being a memorable speaker, I really enjoyed. Adapt to your audience. Always remember who you're talking to. Focus on your story. What is your story? The why, the who, the what? And, that, and also the what's in it for them. And finally, the delivery. Okay, you wanna captivate your audience and you want to get them to not pull out their phone on you. <laughs> Be dynamic. 
And if ever you're living in darkness, you're discouraged, remember there's always hope, there is a purpose, there is a plan, and rest assured that things will get better, okay? Hold on just one more day. Don't suffer in silence, find light in the darkness, reach out to people, you're not alone. And finally, make yourself a priority, take the time for self-care, take a walk, find a support group, okay? Just really, you can do this. You can do this. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Justin, before we put an end to this lovely conversation? <laughs> no, this was great. Thank you so much, Patty, for the opportunity. I love what you do. I've been listening to some of these and watching these on YouTube. It's just really great how you have this platform. And I'm definitely grateful and humbled that I get a chance to have an opportunity to be able to do this with you. So thank you so much for this and all that you do. Thank you. It's been such an honor. It was an honor for me. It was an honor to see you in the Bahamas, to meet you. And I thought, oh, we even shared a hug. That was very good. <laughs> and I'm so happy that we got to speak. And thank you for being so generous. You shared so many tips with us today. And I hope it can help just one person. One person can get help, but I'm sure it'll be a lot more than that because you've impacted uh, thousands of people. So wonderful. Thank you for your time and your friend at home, at work, wherever you are. Remember that the power of your voice can change the world. Find it. And use it. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. <laughs>